Good morning, everyone. Happy to see everyone here this morning. A little chilly, but it's always a wonderful morning to worship the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. Hey, let's stand up for a minute. Greet our neighbors, okay? getting seated back down I'm gonna go ahead and start our announcements here this morning I'd like to remind everybody that uh, this Friday is a fellowship diner the 31st uh, from 6 to 7 I'm sure if you want to come help I'm sure they could use some help need anything or are they needing anything anybody know come help okay and uh, also on the back of that bulletin in your in your uh, in in your insert there's an insert in there about a sweetheart dinner on the 14th and that's put on by the uh, missions group going to be a great time so uh, let's make sure we're going to have some special guests come and sing hard to get some people to come from the 70s but they're coming for us so <laughs> Captain and Tennille and couple others so it'll be a good time Sonny and Cher will be there so I don't know how Sonny pulled it off but <laughs> <laughs> so do we have any other announcements that need to be brought forth this morning let's ask Pastor Dave do you have anything this morning Pastor Dave yeah I do um, hopefully we're gonna get the word tomorrow that uh, uh, Randy Dowdy is uh, approved to move into Burnett Manor he's been working on that it, well hopefully hopefully. Yeah, hopefully let's be praying about that but the other thing is he's going to need a couple of things uh, particularly a bed hopefully a full-size bed and um, a couch and or chair um, also some uh, sheets and blankets uh, would be very helpful so if anybody has anything that you're not using and would be willing to uh, to give that would be wonderful we would greatly appreciate it okay Thanks, Pastor Dave. Uh, does anyone else have any announcements this morning that need to be brought forth? Yes, Dave. Full 
It's come to my attention that there are several people like Randy out here going into this cold spell. And it's quite a situation, especially with those who are housed in the Bob Howenstein uh, places to live. And some of the situations, the uh, drains are frozen up. They haven't had baths for a long time. Some of them have no heat and are trying to get by the best they can. And the situation is getting worse. And so I'm looking to uh, see what we can do about that. I'm going to talk to emergency management today to see if we can house these people temporarily through this cold spell. If any of you have got ideas, please give me a call or see me after the service. Thank you. Thank you, Dave. Does anyone else have any announcements this morning? Any birthdays or anniversaries? No? Tony, I got a new grandbaby. Great grandbaby. Got a new grandbaby. All right, Wanda. Well, Wanda, that's a big... Eight pounds and two, three ounces. He's 21 inches long. Well, hallelujah. Colin, Colin Michael Ellis. Colin Michael, right? Michael White. White? White. Wayne. Wayne. Okay. All right. Well, that's a big blessing for Wanda. That's okay. A great grandbaby. <laughs> Let's all stand as the praise team comes forth. The praise team is looking an awful lot like me this morning. Would anybody like to join me this morning? <laughs> we have a mic. Is it on? <laughs> <laughs> Lord, the light of your love is shining In the midst of the darkness shining Jesus, light of the world, shine upon us Set us free by the truth you now bring us Shine on me Shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine, fill this land with the Father's glory, blaze, Spirit, blaze, set our hearts on fire, flow, river, flow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. presence from the shadows into your radiance by the blood I may enter your brightness search me try me consume all my darkness shine on me shine on me shine Jesus shine fill this land Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord. 
Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory. Mirrored here, may our eyes tell your story. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land with the Father's glory. Blaze, Spirit, blaze. Set our hearts on fire. Flow, river, flow. Flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Oh, Lord, we magnify your name, Prince of Peace, mighty God. Oh, Lord, God Almighty. Let's do that one again. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. Oh, Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. Oh, Lord, we praise your name. Oh, Lord, we magnify your name, Prince of Peace, mighty God. Every week when we, um, when we come in, uh, we introduce ourselves to one another, greet one another to the tune, the family of God. And, uh, you know, it is good to be, it's great to be part of the family of God, but there are times when it's not always so easy, as uh, we'll be talking about today during the service. But we do want to uh, open this morning with the song, I'm so glad to be part of the family of God. I'm so glad. fountain, cleansed by his blood, joint heirs with, with Jesus as we travel this sod, for I'm part of the family, the family of God. You will notice we say brother and sister round here, it's because we're a family, these folks are so near. When one has a heartache, we all share the tears and rejoice in each victory in this family so dear. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. I've been washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Join heirs with Jesus as we travel this sod. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. From the door of an orphanage to the house of the king, I'm no longer a new song I sing From rags unto riches From the weak to the strong I'm not worthy to be here But praise God I belong I'm so glad I'm a part Of the family of God I've been washed 
washed in the fountain, cleansed by His blood. Joint heirs with Jesus as we travel this side. For I'm part of the family, the family of God. Are you glad you're part of the family of God? Amen. Amen. If you would, open your bulletin and follow along with our call to worship. How good and pleasant it is, the psalmist says, when God's people dwell together in unity. It is good, and how glad we are to be part of God's family. Then come, family of God, and let's praise the one who unites us together in love. Let's be the church our Savior calls us to be. And our first hymn this morning is, We Are the Church. Together there, I'll just come up here and say I, I like to do a little bit of action to this song. And uh, so, if you would just, when you say "I am the church," you know, you are the church. Point to somebody and then shake a hand. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. Okay. <laughs> I am the church. You are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. The church is not a building, the church is not a steeple, the church is not a resting place, the church is a people. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. We're many kinds of people with many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages too, from all times and places. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. And when the people gather, there's singing and there's praying, there's laughing and there's crying, sometimes all of it's saying. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. And if you would, open your bulletin once again and follow along with our opening prayer. Loving God. In Christ you have called us to be one family, sisters and brothers in service to the world. But sometimes we squabble, Lord, and your church becomes a house divided, hurting our witness to the world. So in this time of worship, we pray that you would draw us closer to Jesus and closer to the one another, that the world might see him in us. For it's in his name we pray. Oh, Amen. And please be seated. Except for the children. And I'd like to have you come up here and join me and my turtle. Huh? That's Dr. Seuss. That's that is Dr. Seuss, yes. <laughs> Okay, we're going to have this little guy join us right here. And I want to share a story with you because after you guys leave, we're going to be talking about how in Israel, the country where Jesus lived and all, in Israel a long time ago, there was a time when it was really bad. 
And there was one king after another after another, and very few of them did things right. Very few of them were the kind of king that God wanted to be. And so as I thought about that, I thought about one of my favorite stories, which is Yertle the Turtle. And um, so we'll pretend that this is Yertle, even though he's not blue like Yertle is on the front of the book here, okay? So... On the faraway island of Salamasand, Yertle the turtle was king of the pond. Un, uh, the turtles had everything turtles might need, and they were all happy, quite happy indeed. They were until Yertle, the king of them all, decided the kingdom he ruled was too small. I'm ruler, said Yertle, of all that I see. But I don't see enough. That's the trouble with me. If I could sit higher, how much greater I'd be. What a king! I'd be ruler of all I could see. That's how a turtle talks, you know. <laughs> so Yertle the turtle king lifted his hand, and Yertle the turtle king gave a command. He ordered nine turtles to swim to his throne to his stone. And using these turtles, he built a new throne. Then Yertle climbed up. He sat down on the pile. What a wonderful view! He could see most a mile. See that? Boy, look at that poor little guy down on the bottom. All mine, Yertle cried. All the things I now rule. I'm the king of a cow. I'm the king of a mule. I'm king of a house. And what's more, beyond that, I'm king of a blueberry bush and a cat. I'm Yertle the turtle. Oh, marvelous me, for I am the ruler of all that I see. And all through that morning he sat up there high saying over and over, A great king am I, until long about noon, and he heard a faint sigh. What's that? snapped the king, and he looked down the stack, and he saw at the bottom a turtle named Mac. Just part of his throne, and this plain little turtle looked up, and he said, Beg your pardon, King Yertle. I have pains in my back and my shoulders and knees. How long must we, must we stand here, your majesty, please? See him down there, he's just groaning under that. Silence, the king of the turtles barked back. I'm king, and you're only a turtle named Mac. My throne shall be higher, his royal voice thundered. So pile up more turtles. I want about 200. Turtles, more turtles, he bellowed and prayed. And the turtles way down in the pond were afraid. They trembled, they shook, but they came. They obeyed. See them all coming? There they come. And all of them stepped on the head of poor Mac. <laughs> One after another, they climbed up the stack. Then, Yertle the turtle was perched up so high, he could see 40 miles from his throne in the sky. Hooray, shouted Yertle, I'm king of the trees. I'm king of the birds, and I'm king of the bees. I'm Yertle the turtle, oh marvelous me, for I am the ruler of all that I see. Then again, from below, in the great heavy stack, came a groan from that plain little turtle named Mac. Mac. Your Majesty, please, I don't like to complain, but down here below we are feeling great pain. I know up on top you are seeing great sights, but down at the bottom we too should have rights. You hush up your mouth, growled the mighty King Yertle. You have no right to talk to the world's highest turtle. I rule from the clouds, over land, over sea. There's nothing, no nothing that's higher than me. But while he was shouting, he saw with surprise that the moon of the evening was starting to rise. What's that, snorted Yertle? Say, what is that thing that dares to be higher than Yertle the king? I'll call some more turtles. I'll stack them to heaven. I need about 5,607. <laughs> you don't want all those stomping on your head? <laughs> But as Yertle the Turtle King lifted his hand and started to order and give the command, that plain little turtle below in the stack, that plain little turtle whose name was just Mac, Mac that plain little turtle did a plain little thing. He burped. Burp. <laughs> and his burp shook the throne of the king. 
And Yertle the turtle, the king of the trees, the king of the air and the king of the bees, the king of a house and a cow and a mule. Well, that was the end of the turtle king's rule. For Yertle the turtle, the king of all Salamasand, fell off his high throne and fell plunk in the pond. This is Mac. Oh, you think this is Mac? Okay. And today, the great Yertle, that marvelous he, is king of the mud, for that's all he can see. And the turtles, of course, all the turtles are free, as turtles and maybe all creatures should be. Mac is the new king. <laughs> oh, you think Mac is the new king? He was sitting on the rock. Oh, was he? Okay. <laughs> well, you guys, we want to remember that uh, uh, whenever we are in charge, we need, to, we need to be in charge the way that... Uh, we would want other, you know, we need to treat other people the way we would want to be treated, okay? So let's remember that as you head out with Tony, and uh, let's pray before we go. God, we thank you for all the people who lead us in uh, wonderful ways, uh, for all the leaders of our country and our town and our state, and uh, we pray that all leaders would lead the way that you would want them to lead and help us to remember to treat others the way we want to be treated. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, You're see you. You're talking about the golden rule, aren't you? Yeah, yep, that's exactly right. Here, Pastor Deb. Well, as we prepare to come before God in prayer this morning, I'd like to ask if there are any particular uh, joys that you would like to share. The weather. Everybody loves the weather. <laughs> yes. Wow. And that's amazing. For a woman 75, I just... <laughs> Well, that's great. Any other celebrations? Uh, my uncle's surgery went well, and now he's recuperating. That's great. Uncle's surgery went home well, and you said he's home, right? No, he's still in the hospital. Oh, is he? Okay, I misunderstood that. I thought, uh, I thought he was in the hospital. Your grandpa is home, though, isn't he? My grandpa's home. Your grandpa's home, and uh, yeah, and the family has been having a lot uh, going on. Um, Shelly Aker's brother just had open heart surgery this week, and uh, thankfully, um, all things seem to be going the way they should at this point, and so we thank God for that. Um, and uh, Shelly's brother is Tom Brading, so we want to continue to remember Tom in our prayers. Well, shifting gears, I have a, a couple of other uh, prayer requests. Um, Katie Eddington lost her mother this week, and... Um, uh, on Monday, and so she was up there. She was able to be with her mom uh, right to the end and uh, came back here for just a little bit on Thursday, headed back up, and now they have to, you know, sort through things. It's a, it's a difficult time, but it's bittersweet because she's very thankful that she and her siblings were able to be there. Um, then we also want to remember the, um, the Pound's uh, neighbor, Tom Fortenberry, who um, had a stroke this week and is hospitalized and so to remember him uh, thankful uh, Alex may not be thankful for his return from Arizona but you know we're thankful you got back safely and uh, um, and we want to pray for the aiders who are heading to Florida this week well Lord willing and other things work out um, and then the uh, Ruarks, Diana Ruark, our secretary here at the church, she and her husband Mike are down in Florida now for a couple of weeks, and um, uh, hopefully they're enjoying themselves. Uh, okay, do you want to... Clara went into the hospital last Monday, Sunday, and they sent her home. They told her she her hemoglobin and magnesium were low and they treated that and sent her home. She went back in Friday. Um, again, the hemoglobin and magnesium were too low, so now they're checking that. They're also planning to do a heart cath tomorrow. So keep her in your prayers. Very good. Sir. Yes. 
Emily leaves a week from today for Uganda. Okay, very good. Uh, we also want to continue to remember, you know, you've got the whole list in here. Uh, Joe, Joe Blackmore is uh, uh, going through cancer treatments. It's a friend of Brenda Schreiner, and I uh, uh, want to remember him. Uh, he's trying to find transportation to the treatments. Um, down under our shut-ins, uh, you notice Helen Graham is there, and uh, she is now living at Wesley Manor. I had the opportunity on my way back from the north part of the state this week to stop by and see her. Uh, she was doing well. She is enjoying um, meeting people. She's involved in various activities there. Um, and so uh, uh, she just wanted to send her greetings. So hello from Helen. Um, any others that you have? The church fire outside Greencastle. I was not aware of this, so um, do you know what church? S Somerset? Okay, on 231. All right, so let's remember Somerset Church. Yes, Rob. I've got a couple things. Um, first, I'm thankful that Charlie and I made it home. We went over last night to Indianapolis with some of the scouts and wasn't sure I was going to be here. I'd, if I hadn't been doing the reading, I might have just stayed over there last night, but uh, it wasn't as bad as we expected. Uh, also, last week I asked for prayers for my, uh, my cousin's husband, Donnie Isaacs, uh, had a stroke. Uh, looks like he's coming out of that with, with uh, minimal damage, uh, but they are taking him in Tuesday for uh, uh, look at him for open heart surgery, so I asked for prayers there. And also the uh, two families at Purdue that were uh, devastated this week. All right. Well, hearing no others, I did want to mention one more. Um, Mary and I have some friends, uh, Kevin and Marlene Drain, and Kevin is uh, an ordained United Methodist pastor, um, was just appointed to serve, uh, begin serving United Methodist Temple in Terre Haute beginning next Sunday. And they're staying with us for a couple of days while they're getting settled in and such. But uh, we want to pray for them uh, this morning. So. Well, as we prepare to come before God in prayer, shall we uh, join together in the prayer chorus, uh, Bind Us Together, Lord. <laughs> Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. We'll stop there. Good morning, Lord. And it is very good to be here this morning. Not as many of us as usual, and we can certainly understand that. A lot of people have difficulty getting out and around when the weather is the way it is and the roads are the way they are. But we thank you for safe travels here and around the community. We pray for those who cannot be here this morning, Lord, that uh, somehow they would sense your presence with them wherever they are. And Lord, we thank you that um, some people are able to be out and around on vacation and traveling and enjoying warmer climates and other places. We pray for the Ruarks as they are on vacation and uh, hope they have a great time, and for the Aiders as they anticipate heading south, pray for their safe travels and a, a wonderful uh, winter time down there, and for uh, Alex's safe return as well as the others who were with him. Lord, we thank you for the other uh, celebrations that have been mentioned, for uh, successful surgeries, for 
birthdays, uh, for people being able to come home from the hospital, um, for other safe travels. Lord, we also lift up to you those who have been mentioned as uh, on our hearts, uh, concerns. We pray for Katie and her family and their time of grief, losing her mother. May your comforting presence uphold and strengthen them. We pray for Tom Fortenberry and uh, Tom Brading as they are dealing with health issues. We pray for your healing touch upon them as we likewise pray for Claire and pray that uh, her uh, heart catheterization would go well and the medical team would be able to find out what's going on and do whatever is best in that situation. Lord, we also pray for um, Donnie Isaacs that your healing touch would be upon him and we pray for Emily's safe travels to Uganda and a profitable time there. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ who are um, suffering the impact of the church fire Somerset and uh, we pray that they may get back on their feet as quickly as possible. Pray also for Kevin and Marlene as they're making the adjustment to their new setting, saying goodbye to one church and hello to another, getting established in a new home, new community. We pray your guidance for them. We pray your comforting presence for the families uh, of the victims at uh, Purdue who were uh, shot. And, um, oh Lord, so many things. But all of these we lift up to you in the name of Christ. Lord, I do want to pray as we're thinking about kings and government leaders and that this morning. I want to pray for all of our leaders from the federal government to the state to the local governments. For all of those leaders, again, we pray that your guidance uh, would uh, lead them into good decisions and uh, that they might govern well. Again, all these things we lift up to you in the name of Christ as we join together all of our prayers in the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
got several readings, uh, several verses out of the uh, first and second Kings this morning. Uh, Solomon is getting ready to die. Then he rested with his fathers and was buried in the city of David, his father, and Rehoboam, his son, succeeded him as king. Now Rehoboam went to Shechem for all the Israelites had gone there to make him king. When Jeroboam, son of Nebat, heard of this, he was still in Egypt where he had fled from King Solomon. Nebat returned from Egypt. So they sent for Jeroboam, and he and the whole assembly of Israel went to see Rehoboam, and said to him, Your father put a heavy yoke on us, but now lighten the harsh labor and the heavy yoke he put on us, and we will serve you. Rehoboam answered him, Go away for three days, and then come back to me. So the people went away. Three days later, Jeroboam and the people returned to Rehoboam as the king. He said, Come back to me in three days. The king answered the people harshly, rejecting the advice giving, given them by the elders. He followed the advice of the younger men and said, My father made your yoke heavy. I will make it heavier. My father scourged you with whips. I will scourge you with scorpions. Uh, oh. So the king did not listen to the people, for this turn of events was from the Lord, to fulfill the word of the Lord. The word the Lord had spoken to Jeroboam, son of Nebat, saying, Ahijah the Shiolite. When all Israel saw that the king refused to listen to them, they answered the king, What share do we have in David? What part of Jesse's son? To your tents, O Israel, look after your own house, O David. So the Israelites went home. But as far as the Israelites who were living in the towns of Judah, Rehoboam still ruled over them. When all the Israelites heard that Jeroboam had returned, they sent and called him to the assembly and made him king over all Israel. Only the tribe of Judah remained loyal to the house of David. Then over to chapter 14. There was continual war warfare between Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Second Kings, verses 12, or chapter 12. The money brought into the temple was not spent for making silver basins, wick trimmers, sprinkling bowls, trumpets, and other articles of gold or silver for the temple of the Lord. It was paid to the workmen, who used it to repair the temple. But Joash, king of Judah, took all of the sacred objects dedicated by his father, Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, and Ahiza, the kings of Judah, and the gifts he himself had dedicated, and all the gold found in the treasures of the temple of the Lord and of the royal palace, and sent them to Hazel, king of Aram, who then withdrew from Jerusalem. Isaiah chapter. Oh, is it chapter three? Somebody got through both of them. All right. Well, I read the wrong chapter this morning. So, see now, the Lord. The Lord God Almighty is about to take from Jerusalem and Judah both supply and support, all supplies of food and all supplies of water, the hero and the warrior, the judge and the prophet, the soothsayer and the elder, the captain of the fifty and men of rank, the counselor, skilled craftsman and clever enchanter. I will make 
boys their officials, mere children will govern them. People will oppress each other, man against man, neighbor against neighbor. The young will rise up against the old, the base against the honorable. A man will seize one of his brothers at his father's home and say, you have a cloak. You be our leader. Take charge of this heap of ruins. But in that day, he will cry out, I have no remedy. I have no food, no clothing in my house. Do not make me the leader of the people. Now, if you'd please rise for the gospel. And I have to tell you, when I first read this, this reading, this passage, I thought it was a duplication from last week, so I had to get last week's bulletin and make sure that it wasn't the same thing. And then it got me thinking about a song about 15, 20 years ago. See if you can figure out which one I was thinking of. 27. Consider how the lilies grow. They do not labor or spin, yet I tell you, not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God's clo God clothes the fields of the grass, which is here today and tomorrow thrown into the fire, how much more will he clothe you, O you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it. For the pagan world runs all, runs after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. Anybody think of a song? What? I was thinking something a little more secular. Don't worry. Be happy. <laughs> Please be seated. Good morning again. Whoops. Okay. I have a confession. I like the Indiana Jones movies. And probably my favorite one is The Last Crusade. And if you remember that movie, Indiana Jones and his father Henry are searching for the Holy Grail. Now the motive, their motive for finding the Grail is because they are archaeologists and they want to share the Grail with the world. But of course, being the action exciting movie that it is, there are others seeking the grail with less um, pure motives, shall we say. They want the grail for their own greedy, nefarious purposes. And so as we could predict, all of them converge where they believe the grail to be at the same time. Now this is a, a cave or could be considered a church carved into the rock. So Indiana and his competitors go into the inner part of the church and they find an old knight guarding an altar with multiple cups, multiple chalices upon the altar. And so the competitors in their haste, the woman, in her haste, grabs the jewel-encrusted golden cup. And she tricks her partner into drinking the liquid, the water that she puts into the cup, and you know what happens. And the knight says, he, she chose poorly. Indiana then goes to the altar and looks at the cups, and he chooses the wooden simple cup and says, this is the cup of a carpenter. He drinks from the cup, and of course it is fine. And the knight says, he chose wisely. Today, we find ourselves in the section of the story that Rob read to us, where we are going to consider the kings, particularly Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Both had opportunities, multiple opportunities, to choose wisely, but both chose poorly. 
And the consequences of those poor choices had tremendous ripple effects for the people of God for many years. Please pray with me. Dear God, we come to you this day. We come to you considering these stories that are in our heritage and that we must remember for these stories lead us to the path to the Messiah. These stories lead us to the building of your church. And while that will come years after these kings, it gives us hope because we know, we know that it leads to the Messiah. So please open our hearts and our minds to hear the words that the scriptures will speak to us this day. And be with us as your church and guide us and direct us and help us to choose wisely so that we will not become a house divided. Thank you for these, your faithful servants, in your church. This we ask in your most precious holy name. Amen. Well, <clears throat> prior to the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln gave one of his most famous speeches. It's his house divided speech. And in that, in that speech he said, a house divided against itself cannot stand. He said, I believe this government cannot endure permanently half slave and half free. I do not expect the union to be dissolved. I do not expect the house to fall. But I expect it will cease to be divided. How wise he was. And I wonder if when he wrote those words, he remembered in the scriptures, both Christ saying those very words, but I, remember, I wonder if he remembered the story that we're going to consider today. As Rob read to us, recall that last week you considered Solomon, David's son. He had been king and he is dying. His reign began well, but remember how it ended? Not so well. What was happening when he died? Idol worship, intermarriage, disobedience to God. Solomon had imposed harsh labor on his people. Now his purpose in doing that was supply of labor to keep his court standing, to maintain an army because there was a lot of fighting going on, and to have the trappings that he wanted in his court. So enter today's story of Ray and Jay. Rehoboam and Jeroboam. Now, Rehoboam goes to Shechem to be confirmed as king. He had to go there because that was the largest city, that's where the people were, and so that's where he would be confirmed as king. As Rob read, Jeroboam is, is summoned from Egypt where he had gone to escape from Solomon. The people of Israel go to Rehoboam after he is confirmed and they say to him, please lighten the harsh conditions that you have imposed upon you, the people or that have been imposed upon the people. So he says, the people say to him, if you do this, we will serve you. What a golden opportunity. They're inviting him to be a leader of the people. Now, it's not a bad thing. He sends them away for three days because he wants to consider this. Okay, that gives us some hope. What does he do in those three days? He consults his elders, and the elders tell him, do that. Lighten the load. These people will be your people. They will serve you if you do this. <laughs> Rehoboam says, Meh, that's silly. I'm not going to do that. It makes me wonder how many times we perhaps have consulted wiser people than we are. And 
not followed their advice. So Rehoboam then goes to the young people with whom he grew up. And it's only natural. We usually consult our peers, or sometimes do. What did the peers say to him? They lived harshly before. You make it harsher. Oh my. Rehoboam thinks that sounds pretty good. So that is what he does when the people come back, come back to him. He says, no, I'm not going to lighten your load. It is going to be worse. Oh my. Because of this, the kingdom is divided. The southern kingdom, it, would you uh, put the slide of the map, please? Thank you, Mark. Oh, that was Rehoboam and Jeroboam. I forgot to show you that picture. Sorry. There's a, that's an engraving of the two kings. But here's the divided kingdom. In the southern kingdom, it's made up of the tribes of Judah and Benjamin. And it is ruled by Rehoboam. He only gets two tribes because of this most disastrous decision that he has made. The northern kingdom is made up of the other ten tribes. It's called Israel, and it is given to Jeroboam to rule. Now, J, Jeroboam, too, has a golden opportunity. And you might think that he would have looked at what Rehoboam did and said, well, maybe I could be a little wiser. But he, too, forgot who he should be serving. He, too, thought he had the answers. He, too, thought he could do it alone. He feared that the people would want to travel to Jerusalem, to the temple, to worship. And he feared that if he did that, they would turn their allegiance to Rehoboam. Well, he said, can't have that. So he says to the people, I'm going to do you a favor. I'm going to save you from having to make these harsh journeys and travel. I will build you idols to worship. Next slide, please. So he builds two golden calves. It doesn't even look very nice. He builds two golden calves and places them strategically and says to the people, worship these idols. <laughs> the people forgot. The people listened to him, and so they did that. And he thought, well, that worked out so well. I'll just build some other sanctuaries. And I'll appoint priests that aren't Levites. And take care of the people. And the people fell right in line. And so right back we go. The people chose poorly. They worshipped idols. Now, what is at stake for these people? Well, first, this return to the worship of these idols. The return to paganism. Not putting God first. And when these people failed to put God first, that put them into situations of injustice. Because when they didn't put God first, they forgot the rules. They forgot the laws that they had been given, and they forgot how to treat one another. They forgot how to live in community. And how to care for people who were weaker. You know what? If we choose poorly, if we forget to put God first, those same things are at stake for us. What idols do we have today? Money? Things, you know, do we like bigger TVs, bigger houses, more clothes? 
What are our idols today? We must remember to put God first. We must learn from these people. We must choose more wisely. We live in community. We live together as God's people. We live together as the church. We too must remember how to treat one another. It's easy to have petty arguments. It's easy to get stuck in the little things. And when we get stuck in those little things, we can't move forward and we can't do the mission that we've been called to do and do the work of the church. So we too must choose wisely, must learn from these mistakes that these people made. Well, as Rob read, Ray and Jay waged war continuously. It's not pretty. And in fact, after Jeroboam's death, there was a, su a succession of bad kings who ruled Israel. And after Rehoboam's death, it's not much better. His son, well, there is a glimmer of hope there. His son, Rehoboam's son, ruled for three years. That was really bad. But his son, then, um, Asa became king of Judah. He ruled for 41 years, and that's the ray of hope. Asa was a good king. Asa returned the people to right worship. He took away the idols. In fact, Asa sent his grandmother away because she refused. She kept her idols. She kept her statue, and he said, no, no. My kingdom is going to worship God, and if you can't do that, I'm taking you away. So the queen mother was removed. So there is a glimmer of hope. And within this rule of Asa, God sent prophets to talk to the people and to tell the people and to warn the people what they needed to do. And next week, Pastor Dave is going to talk to you about some of these prophets and what they said to the people. Now, the northern king, the northern kingdom, Israel, eventually fell to the Assyrians. The ten tribes were conquered and they were sent into exile. The southern kingdom is ruled by this time by Hezekiah. We, we cover a lot of territory this week. Ruled by Hezekiah. Now, again, Hezekiah offers us a ray of hope. He defied the Assyrian king. When he got wind of the fact that they were to be attacked, he went to the temple and he laid out his plans on the altar and he asked for God's help. And Isaiah the prophet did help, did intercede with God. But then <laughs> Hezekiah's son became king. He was an evil king. And so now, this is Manasseh, so now Isaiah comes to him and he tells him that the Babylonians will conquer them and they too will be sent into exile. But the exile will be temporary and they will be returned home. Now, all of this history and all of these kings, there were something like 38 kings who ruled the two kingdoms in 200 years. And in those 38 kings, only a handful, literally about five, were good kings. And I alluded to a couple of them. So this time is really hard for the people Israel. They suffered great oppression. It would be hard for them to choose wisely, but nonetheless, God did not abandon his people. So against this story of war and oppression is God's story, God's plan. God did not abandon the people. We know that God keeps his promises and God had a plan. Recall that God had made covenants with Israel through the fathers, Abraham, Moses, and David. Recall that to Abraham, he had promised a great nation 
and that the people would eventually come to the land of milk and honey. To Moses, he gave the law. He taught, he taught how to live in community, how to treat one another. And to David, he promised that he would establish David's throne and that he would, over time, send the Messiah. Judah would be a blessing. God will build his church even through and even though there was this great time of suffering and war and oppression. Now, I was thinking about this passage a lot this week and I thought to myself, you know, I really want to thank Pastor Dave for giving me the opportunity to preach about war and oppression, doom and gloom. <laughs> but it is not all doom and gloom because the rest of the story is what I was just saying to you. God will build his church against that oppression. God will eventually, it will be a few more years, uh, several hundred years, before the Messiah comes. But this story points us in the direction of the Messiah. The human kings thought they could rule by their own methods. Rehoboam refused to serve the people. He imposed a heavy yoke and burden. He spoke harshly. But think about then the king, a different king who did come. Think about the Messiah. He was a king who would serve and give his very life to the people. He would provide an easier yoke and lighten the burden. And he would speak gently and humbly. So within the doom and gloom, there is promise, there is hope. There is grace. So, we, the church, have decisions to make. We, the church, can choose to not become a house divided. Oh yes, that doesn't mean that we won't have disagreements and differences about how to get things done. But it means that we can have those disagreements in a loving way, in a respectful way, in a way that promotes dialogue and helps us do the work of the church and move the church forward. One of my favorite poems is Robert Frost, Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Day. He says, two roads diverged in a wood, and I, I took the road less traveled by, and that has made all the difference. I invite us to take the road less traveled by. I invite us to take the road of the five kings who were good kings, who reminded the people who they are and whose they are. I invite us to remember who we are and whose we are. And to remember the promise of the Messiah who did come. For our story is leading us on that journey. And the Messiah will come and we will celebrate that coming. We are the church. You are the church. I am the church. We are the church together. And for that, I am grateful. For that, we can all be grateful. Thanks be to God. And as the church, we do work. We do do mission. And so, it is with that in mind, with the church together, in mind, that we give back a portion of all that has been given to us. So let us now receive our tithes and offerings.
Let us pray. We, Lord, we know that money alone cannot heal the brokenness in our world. Yet we offer these gifts for you, asking that you would bless and use them to bring healing and wholeness to our world, beginning right here in this church. Bless us too, we pray, that we might be used as instruments of peace. In Jesus' name, amen. And now, let us join together in our closing hymn, Let There Be Peace on Earth. go from this place to be peacemakers as Jesus called us to be, reaching out to others in the name of Christ, and may you go with his peace in your heart to bring peace, to share peace with all the world in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>